Hey, this is Meredith Myers with StandUpLibrarian.com, and I'm here at the uh, LA Times uh, Festival of Books um, with an amazing artist and now author. Um, his name is uh, Nathan Larson. Um, Nathan. Hi, how are you? Oh my gosh. Uh, so, obviously, a huge fan of Jealous Gods. Thank um, you very much. Thank not you. Not just because it was on Artemis, which was a PR client of mine back in the day. Right. But um, now you're an author with this yeah. uh, new book called The hey, Dewey me, Decimal System me, here. There he is. So, is writing uh, for a novel uh, much different than writing music? Is it a, a different process? I don't think process, so at all. A, a, a similar, an artistic process. You you need sort of your needs are different. You know, you don't really need any like a studio. You don't need any equipment, but you do need time and you need space and you need uh, relative solitude. And that's something that's I found even more difficult to get than. Uh, into a recording studio. The title so. of the book, The Dewey Decimal System. Yeah. Now, is that a shout out to librarians or what's... Hell yeah. <laughs> Which we love. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. No, uh, it's it's uh, the, the protagonist, it's sort of a, it's been described as a dystopian noir, not by me, but um, it, it uh, it's about a very damaged man, a veteran, who returns to his hometown of New York City, which has been um, uh, kind of decimated by some unspecified disaster and uh, kind of emptied out and he moves into the main branch library which I've always I've had this love affair with that library and, and when I was you know a teenager and totally confused and didn't know what to do with myself um, I spent a lot of time there and um, um, found it to be a very sort of spiritual place I mean you know it's like a church, sort of, to me. You know, it's got all this, you know, the history, and I think about the 30s, and the people there without work, and trying to better themselves, and learn. You know, it's a, it's an incredible. It doesn't matter who you are, you can sit there from when they open until when they close, and you can read whatever they got. You know, mm -hmm. which is everything. So it's a beautiful um, thing, and it's a gorgeous space, um, and it's something I think it's sort of it's on the tourist, like. Uh, it's on the like their radar because of the lions and the exterior of the building, but people don't often, if they're not from New York, go inside the library. And it's such a beautiful. Even if you are from New York, go in there and like go into the reading room. And it's a, just a wonderful place. This is one of the reading rooms So, do you have another uh, book yeah, in the I, works? Then do we have yeah, a sequel coming, or there's a, there's going to be three books of those. Oh, great! In that series, and there's uh, the second one. I'm well into, um, and then uh, I'm starting to sort of like look at the third one. Mm -hmm. So I'm figuring this so whole on thing on the out. music front because um, you've obviously done uh, Boys Don't Cry, and um, you've provided music for a, a numerous amount of um, yeah, movies. Yeah. Now you have something coming up that you're working on something. Oh, Are you God, doing the yeah. Idiot Brother? Or is that uh, is they there did, a film? Yes, uh, it's with Paul Rudd, right? Our Idiot Brother. They named it no, R, not my. Don't know why. <laughs> they just changed the name. Um, yes, with Paul Rudd. So that's sort of a com, more of a. It's a smart but but relatively broad comedy with the usual cat you Zoe Dashnell and all those these those folks. I'm doing a Judy um, Bloom adaptation. Are you really? <laughs> yeah, which is called Tiger Eyes. T Tiger Nobody, Eyes title, by Judy Bloom. People have not heard of that title. Who are Judy Bloom experts? A lot of people. Although I'm I'm told it I'm told it was one of the more obscure ones. Anyway, he's making her son is making the film version of that. Oh my gosh! Film. So I'm working on that. I'm just about to start working on that. So. I have to keep things in the air in order to, you know, stay afloat. Well, you've got a lot going on, and I'm so glad that we had a chance to sit down yes. and just talk about these amazing things. To continue uh, to do things to, to show how um, uh, libraries are, are completely vital and important in today's yeah. world. I just have to say something really, you know, it was, I, I was doing a reading in, at the Baltimore Library, uh, the Enoch Pratt Library. Did I tell you this? Mm -hmm. the other, I don't know. And it was this absolutely gorgeous building, built, you know, WPA period, sort of 30s era. It's called Enoch Pratt Free Library, I believe it was called. 
um, another like gorgeous landmark in Baltimore, and we were in the Poe reading room. It was absolutely amazing, but everybody who was working there was furloughed. It was like the city had totally run it. All these libraries are getting shut. It's just unacceptable in this society. It's unacceptable. It's as you know. It's 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 a uh, it's as part. Uh, it's as, as crucial a part of the fabric of our community as, as anything else. And it's just, you know, as, as we lose these things, we lose so much. We lose so much. And people, you know, you, and, and, and once you lose it, like, how do you get it back? So, so um, it, it's just, we're facing a really weird, really, really challenging time. You know, exciting in a sense, but also really scary. So support your library, your local library. There you go. That's a great way to end it. Support yeah. your library and, of yeah. course, support Nathan Larson by getting this book, uh, The Dewey Decimal System. <clears throat> um, so, all right. I'm Meredith Myers with uh, Nathan Larson Thank for StandUpLibrarian.com. Thanks, Nathan. Thank you so much. <laughs>